If you are an estate agent, letting agent, or someone who is interested in the property market, then this, the UK Property Market Stat Show, is for you. It's a weekly YouTube show that comes out every single week, including the title, and we, um, myself, Chris Watkin, with a special guest, looks at what's happening in the UK property market. The vast majority of stats that you see out there are looking at sales that took place six or nine months ago. Uh, the land registry, for example, uh, is, we'll be looking today, we're filming this in August, we'll be looking at sales which took place in October and November last year. That's the nature of their index. Uh, Halifax are looking at sales that took place five or six months ago. But if we actually look about what's happening with listings and with uh, price reductions and what's actually selling, the number of properties selling and the number of properties falling through, we can have a great judgment of what will happen to those indices in six or nine months' time. Each week, I'm joined by a special guest, someone from the uh, property industry who knows their onions. And this week, I'm joined, well, rejoined by, by Richard Durant from the Relocation Agent Network, uh, which is an organization of many amazing estate agents around the country. And Richard is their El Supremo Managing Director, shareholder of Relocation Agent Network. Richard, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Chris. Looking, looking forward to uh, seeing what the stats, stats show us. It's been a while. It has. So let's dive in straight away and have a look at, at those stats. And we are going to start with listings. So I'll just pull those up now and I'll share the screen and we'll go and have a look. So listings this week um, have are remaining pretty constant around the 31,000 mark. The running average for the four weeks is 32,023. Um, um, and the average, the, the, the long-term average over the last seven years has been an average of 28,800. So we're just a bit above the long-term average. Uh, but the average for 2023, we are running at 32,845 for the month. Uh, for the week on average in terms of the number of list uh listings year to date we are uh looking at around just over we just broke through the million mark the average price of a property that's come on the market this week is four hundred and eight thousand. which last week it was 412 the week before 416 and the long term average is 431 so it's pr pretty stable there and then looking at week 32 because week 32 is what this is the week that we are looking at which if i'll just pull up the the magic um thing and that is monday the 7th of august to um sunday the 13th of august inclusive um what's your thoughts on these mate I think I think as we've discussed before, the, the numbers or certainly the numbers of new listings seem to be fairly consistent throughout the year, and certainly with with the price sort of seven years uh, we're measuring against thirty one thirty one thousand new instructions is a healthy number, especially for that second week of August. Um, I think the big question is, and I'm sure we'll go on to discuss, is will they sell in this market? which comes down to obviously a number of factors, including the ability of the agent to reduce prices, but ultimately how motivated the vendors are to sell. Um, and, I, and I think we can look at the listings and look at the listings. I think as we delve into the show more, there'll be a few more key indicators of where the market really is. Good stuff. Right. Okay. Can't disagree with you on that one, mate. Right. Let's move on and look at the number of price changes. Um, and again, just before well, actually, before we just talk about the number of price changes, I think it's important that it's to, to look at these listing numbers. What I mean by that is this, is if that number starts to, and if you look at the stats from 2008, if the number of properties goes up considerably and it, and the number of listings went through the roof, so they increased by about 50, 55% in the late 07 to, to 08. You know, if that number goes from 31 up to 45 and 50, that's when we have an issue with supply and demand. And that's where we have too many properties coming on the market and that's going to drive prices down. So this is an important metric. It's not a, it's not a case of how many properties are coming on the market. As Richard said, it's how many of them actually sell. So we've got to look at the listings and we've got to look at the sales and compare the difference between the two. Right, okay. Chris, I think a key factor on that is is motivated vendors, isn't it? Is we've been in a market certainly for the last five, six years where somebody may say, well, actually, if I get 700,000 pounds for my house, I would move and they're able to get that. I think we're going into a market or certainly over the next 18 months where a lot of the buyers 
who purchased their properties 18 months ago are coming to the end of their fixed rate mortgages at one and a half, two percent. They've not seen any capital appreciation in their properties, but all of a sudden their mortgage is going to jump from one, two percent to five, six percent. Then you've got motivated sellers with potentially prices decreasing. That's when it gets interesting. And again, do remember, estate agents, that if you're dealing with someone and says, well, I don't want to lose the money that I've got in the house, remind them of the profit they made on the previous one. You know, and just say if you were selling your own house where you moved where you were before, you'd only be losing that. And, and it's not so much. So just bear that in mind. I think it's important for estate agents to remember that, that you've got to look at the whole picture, not just what they've lost on now, because everything's relative. Um, right. Number of price changes. Um, we are on twenty thousand nine hundred and seventy one, which um, that has been. I mean, again, the average for the last couple of weeks has been around the twenty two, twenty three thousand mark. But again, there are some estate agents on holiday. Estate agents are allowed holidays. Uh, and the long term average for the year has been nineteen and a half thousand. The average price of a property that has been uh, um, reduced this week is 379,000. Um, and again, very similar to last week at 383 and 404 the week before. Um, just shows the agents are you uh, you doing their stock, aren't they? Yeah, I think, Chris, I've, I've looked at these numbers and I presuming I've got it right, and there's a good chance I haven't, 20,000 reductions and 31,000 new instructions is circa 66%, um, which is about 6% up on the rest of the year. I think the media are helping agents reduce the stock. There's a lot of fear-mongery going on, and I think that's making agents' jobs easier. Um, but we're certainly seeing more and more price changes. I mean, just to give you an idea in terms of the current levels of stock levels, this is the this is agents reducing about 13 or 14% of their stock. But, you know, it looks a lot, but it isn't actually that a, a lot when you actually take on the whole consideration. Um Let's move on to, to gross sales. And this is looking a little bit sorrier. Um, we are presently running at about 90%. We are presently running at about, oof, I mean, just to give you an idea, the, the, the year to date gross sales is 709,000, as you can see on the chart here, which is very similar to 2017, but 18 and 19 was slightly more. So, um, in terms of, we'll come on to the net levels but uh, in a second, but just to give you a, a little bit of an insight, we're presently running at 91.5% of net sales compared to 17, 18, and 19. But let's come back to gross sales. Thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think, I think, we, can, I think we can see on that pink line uh, that there's definitely a trend where it's going down and, and reducing. But if you um, actually, but again, if you look nineteen and eighteen, they were again they're, they're all drifting off because we're in the Easter month. And again, the if you if this this particular dip here is it is is Easter Bank holiday, which is happening in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, and I think Chris, we, we've got a network of agents across the country. And one thing I've really learned uh, since acquiring the network is London market seemingly pretty much closes for July and most of August. So, so whereas the rest of the country, we may go away for our two week holiday to the Costa del Sol or whatever, it seems that London market really, really does shut down. And therefore, how much of their numbers are impacting this, this number for week 32? Could be, but then you've got to say that, that 19 and 18, they were also during the Easter month. I, I, I sorry, the, 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 the summer months, you don't know. I mean, the simple fact is, is that we are slightly behind, you know, we cannot compare ourselves to, uh, 2021 20, and 22, they were exceptional years. And again, I, I, the number of agents I, I talked to are comparing themselves against that. Those 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 are exceptional years. Those are black swan years. You've got to get back to good old fashioned estate agency where you've actually got to earn your money and sell the house. But, you know. but as agents, do you not think that we have a mentality that the exceptional becomes the expected? So, so whilst we all know the last couple of years were exceptional years, are we sat there saying they're exceptional years and I should be measuring against 18 and 19? Or are we sat there it, disappointed that we're measuring it against last year? I know what's right, Chris. I understand why we what, what we should be measuring against. I also think that costs have gone up against 18 and 19, haven't they? 
Yes, I mean we we touched on this a couple of shows ago, and we actually showed that that the the costs have gone up, but then the if we're working on a percentage fee, the the, the house prices have gone up by almost the identical level. So if we're only still charging one percent, costs and the fees have gone up by the same amount. If we're still charging the same, which is a completely different thing, because the number of agents that seem to be pulling their pants down on fees, I'm hearing, still continues. It's commercial suicide. But again, I can see that better to have some money in the till than no money in the till it's yeah it's, it's a real it's a real juggling act isn't it so um the average price of a property sold is 300 pardon me 351,300 and the number of properties sold this week in isolation of week 32 of the year 20,000 which again if you're comparing ourselves against uh look 2020 almost double those are exceptional years yeah. Chris, can I ask you a question on this uh, national sole subjects contract? Yes. So accepting that region to region will change, my assumption, or let's assume that it takes eight weeks to sell a property from original listing to sale. And again, with an assumption that we're not necessarily measuring apples with apples because we could be listing five bedroom detached houses and selling three bedroom semi detached houses. However, if we're saying it takes eight weeks to sell, eight weeks ago, the average listing price was 450. The average price of reductions was 426. Yeah. Um, yet the average price of a sole subject to contract is 351. Yep. Um, which is sort of an eight, which is sort of 82% of that 426 number. Yeah. So I'm so telling telling us that larger properties are not selling or not within that eight week period. Um or are they telling us that we're reducing and reducing more than we're possibly seeing? Uh, and again, it will vary from location to location and probably a combination a combination of a three. Well, uh, I've got some more stats on that, so let me show you that. Um, let's just pull up this one here. I fully appreciate that uh, for those, those of you looking that um, it, the numbers are quite small, so I'm going to have to zoom in a bit. You can see this line here, the percentage difference between yeah. listing and sale price. And it's been hovering around the 17, 18, 16, as you can see here, 21, 19. So what what you're so again this week it's 16. Um I always thought uh, some people have said people are taking 16% off the price. It isn't. Basically, what, what happens is the higher price properties have a lower propensity to sell. Yeah. So a million pound house has a chance has a chance of probably a forty percent chance of. I do have these stats, but not to hand because I didn't know you were going to ask me, which is fine because I like to be kept on my toes. Whilst a property that's near as a near say two hundred thousand pounds will have a propensity to sell of probably seventy or eighty percent. So therefore, if you're putting all the houses on the market and the lower price ones have a greater chance, greater propensity to sell, that means that the price of the average price of a property selling will but actually be lower. Now, I've looked at th this average here. I've I've looked back over the last seven years, and this is always between fifteen and seventeen percent on average. Okay. It's around there, okay, depending on the year, but around fifteen, seventeen percent. I was co very concerned at, uh, around May time when she was knocking on the door of twenty four. But what is particularly interesting is this. And we'll just we'll just scroll down a second. And again, uh, I know we're not we're going to do the regional figures in a second. Inner London really does cock the figures up. Now that is a technical term, so I'll just pull that up. There we go. And if you can see, let me just pull make those a bit bigger for you, so you can see them. You see, as you can see here in London, the average can be as much as thirty two percent. Yeah. And these are really these real and London really does mess up the national average because look, you've got properties here. So this line here is the average price of a property coming on the market. You know, look, one million, one million and five, nine hundred and fifty-two. And then the average yeah. price of a property selling, which is this one, is eight hundred. And that just shows because we we've done this in previous shows is that the, you know, the stuff that's over like three or four million pounds has a really low chance of selling. I think it's near 25, 30% if off top of my head. I could, as I said, I'll try and find out for the next show or the show afterwards, but that's what, that's that. So my, my, and again, for those of you who are watching this show, we've got the regional stats and you can look at them, but there are the numbers 
are much tighter around the UK compared to London. I don't know if that answers your question, but... Yeah, yeah, absolutely, which was around that length of time to sell as well and the higher price stuff probably not selling. Yeah, I mean, um, let me just... just um, yeah, I do. And again, we've done some stats in the past on how quick does it take to sell a property depending on its price range. And again, it's a classic that the more expensive it is, the longer it takes to yeah. sell and the the lower the chance, the, the lower chance you'll actually get it to sell. That's why if you're an estate agent and you're looking to sell at your house and say, well, how can you how can you charge more for selling my house? The simple fact is you've got to, you've got to do a lot more work and you're not going to necessarily sell it. Okay, it's an, it's an interesting conversation, that Chris, isn't there? Because as agents, we're trained always were to build chains. So actually, yes. you'd want to take on the the highest price properties and sell the six bedroom to the five bedroom and the five to the four and so on. Whereas actually, what you're saying is there's a there's a higher risk of that top property not selling for whatever reason, whether it falls through, whether it's a chain breakdown, whatever it is. So are we putting all of our eggs in a basket, and will that mentality change? I mean, yeah, again, it's, again, you as estate agents, it's not a case of just selling the properties. Richard rightly says you've got to build a chain and the smaller the chain, the less chance it's going to fall out of bed. Because how many people, you know, I'll just show you this stat here. Um, there we go. Hold on. I'll just put it up now. Oh, where is it gone? Do you know, I think I've lost it. Keep talking, Richard, while I go and find it, mate. Um, let's go and find it. Hold on. There we go. Open with preview. That's good. We're in there. Good. There we go. Sorry about this. Hold on. Keep talking, Richard. We don't want any. Um... <laughs> we don't. I, I, I will talk actually slightly on that, which is it's amazing the uh, contradicting data which is out there, isn't there? So on one hand, I'm sort of fairly optimistic about the market. The latest data from HMRC, albeit we know it's delayed, shows a seasonally adjusted. Transaction total of about 85,000 transactions, which is a 6% increase in May. So you're sort of punching the air, high-fiving, um, all positive. Yeah, but it also shows 15% down from June. But likewise, mortgage lending in June was uh, 20 billion, I believe, which is the highest since October 2022. So I think from agents and the stories we're telling our clients um, needs to be carefully constructed. It's interesting with regard to the um, to the land registry is that um, when they do uh, publish the transaction numbers, it probably is the the transaction. I, you've almost got to take the transaction levels with a pinch of salt, because remember, solicitors have an awful long time to get their transactions in, and yeah. what you often find is those numbers will will rise and rise as you know as the months move forward. Those months that where it looked like a low number of transactions grow up. It's the solicitors are catching up. So again, I've got to be slightly careful with those sort of stats. But the mortgage lending was an interesting one for me, which is sort of the highest since October 2022. That surprised me. I think the magic, you're absolutely right. I think the magic thing is this, is, is data like this, let me just put, let me just share the screen with you now. Hold on. Is, is you need the property sold subject to contract to enable you to know whether you, the mortgage details and the land registry. And this is the beauty of this show is that we know exactly where we are six or nine months before these people start announcing the figures. And, you know, this is why it's important that you look at the, look at these graphs. And again, I will stress to anyone, these graphs are available to download on YouTube. If you go to the description, a little link at the bottom, I've got, um, you're not, I'm, you're not, without my permission you're not to use them on social media but what i do because uh, i have to save them for my clients but i'm more than happy for you to use these in your valuations okay so you can use them on your valuations on your ipad to show people what's happening in the market and the graphs like this you know will make you look like a, an estate agent that knows what they're talking about Right, let's move on and look at the number. As I said, the number of we've, so we've done gross sales, fall throughs, and fall throughs are down this week, Richard, with a um, with five thousand eight hundred and fifty six. Last week it was six thousand one hundred and five, and the week before five nine five. So, and the percentage fall through rate is also down at twenty eight point four. Which again, a few months, a few weeks ago, we were going into thirty percent territory. Ignore the blip at Christmas because that always happens. Low number of sales, low number of fall throughs. It doesn't take too much for it just to make a, a, a weird spike. 
this is the magic that here is this. Look, we were at fall through rates just after a certain budget in the autumn at 40%. So it's going down. What's your thoughts on fall throughs? Yeah, and I think there's also a bit of stability. I think there's some stability we've seen certainly this week and last week in these mortgage rates. And we, I think there's a lot of concern from people who are buying and we know or we believe the media in terms of mortgage rates being pulled and pulled and therefore that will improve. I also think, as we've mentioned already on this show, I think the motivation of vendors, you know, if you come into a market which isn't necessarily as favourable as it has been for the last few years, you are moving because you have a motivation to do so. And therefore, those motivated people are less likely to withdraw. What is also particularly interesting, Richard, and I'm, I, I can only match what you're saying, is I've been talking to some estate agents and what they've said is in the last couple of months, he said he said normally it would take about this is from one of the agents I know who's got a decent market share in the Midlands. He would normally expect 10 to 12 viewings for one offer. And now he's getting fewer viewings, but he's getting the same and he's getting right offers on five or six one offer for every five or six viewings. So he's, you there's, few, there's fewer people. And now this is anecdotal evidence of one agent, but he's a big player. Fewer list, fewer viewings, but higher quality. Yeah, I think that I think that rings completely true. We used to do a thing in the agency and it won't and it certainly wasn't unique to us. And you would have done it and everybody did it, but we ABC'd our stock. So A was priced correctly and motivated. B was either priced correctly and motivated or motivated and not priced correctly. And uh, and C was incorrectly priced and unmotivated. And the task every week was to get everybody into the A's or the C's and not spend any time on them. Yep. Um, and I bumped into somebody I used to work with um, a couple of weeks ago before I went away. And they said, oh, and I used to bang on about ABC in your stock and nag people about it. And he said, we're 50-50. And I said, what do you mean you're 50-50? And he said, ABC. We're 50% A's, 50% C's. We haven't got anybody in that B because we're sussing out whether they're motivated and not spending time with them, or we're bringing the price down. It's a lot easier. At least you know where you stand, don't you? Exactly. That's all they want, don't you? You spend 50% of your time or, or 100% of your time on your A's and no time on your on your C's. I mean, would, should you be taking properties on the market that are C's? I think I think it's really hard. I think it depends on your tactic, and I don't think there's one tactic which is right. So can I take on a property which is a C, which is an unmade, and let's presume it unmotivated and priced incorrectly, if it's going to attract inquiries from people with a house to sell where I can where I can benefit from? And there's an argument for it. On the flip side, is that potential homeowner who really is motivated to sell seeing my listings overpriced potentially and not being able to get in for viewings and it having a negative impact on on my business and my brand? And and I, and I don't know the answer. I think it depends on where you are. Well, as at the stage that you, you you've got to have them to to sell them, and you know it's all very good going in saying I'm I'm going to be virginal white and just put on keenly priced properties, but sometimes. If you give it to the other agent, they might get the price down. Yeah, it's a difficult one. It's the million dollar question. I, I also think, again, dependent on your tax and ultimately our job as a state agency is to sell houses. But I think especially as we're seeing numbers slowly decrease, it's really important to increase your revenue sources. And therefore, is that overpriced house, which may not ever result in any revenue coming into my business, going to generate inquiries which allow me not only to sell them other properties and sell their own property, but sell them some a mortgage and some life insurance and, and, and. So I think everybody has an argument. What I think you need to determine is what your tactic is and why you're doing it and become really good at converting the inquiry for the overpriced property into the additional revenue or whatever it, whatever your tactic is. Absolutely bang on. Net sales. So this is gross sales, less less fall throughs for the week. And we are presently on 14,758. Um, just to give you an idea, the average for the year has been, oh no, I've got more windows open, um, 16,792. So it's not a million miles off, is it? No, I think it is. The white, think, dot, the, the white dots are the average of 17, 18, and 19 combined. And then, obviously, you've got the green, which is 21, yellow, 20, and, and turquoise, 22. 
Yeah, I think I think if you look at it in in isolation on a week on week uh, against sort of average weekly figures, it's fairly consistent in the, the sales percentage of listings has hovered around that sixty six percent mark. But as I think you mentioned a little bit earlier, if you looked at that ninety one percent, Chris, I think it's on the next slide up. Thank actually, you. that becomes slightly worrying, doesn't it? So, but then if at the start, of, if if you said at the start of the year with with the dark clouds that were forming on the horizon, you'll be 91.5% of what you did in 17, 18, and 19. I think most agents would take that. I completely agree. Completely agree. I also think if you said to most estate agents, have you reduced your cost by 9.5% to get you to the same net result at the end of the year, many of them would have an increased cost rather than a decreased cost. So the concern for me is isn't necessarily about that 91 and percent it's how you're managing the rest of a business to take that into consideration Be, because i don't believe there's many businesses so if we put aside fees and everything else i don't believe there's many businesses whose payroll is at 91.5 percent of what it was a year ago or two years ago no but remembering that house prices have gone up by the same amount as inflation, so so if that was a hundred percent, it would be an even even, but it isn't. Yeah. But all I know is this: it's bloody hard work out there to be an estate agent, and it, and yes, you have to look at your costs, but there's only so much you can cut off. I mean, this question is: oh. should you, should you be on all three portals? Do you need to be on all three portals? Chris, I I imagine that the majority of our cost base in these businesses are staff. Yes. And ultimately, you're competing, aren't you? The same as you're competing to win the instructions, you're competing to win the best staff. And, and actually, now, I think the best staff will win and the businesses who are prepared to pay for the best staff will win because they're experienced and they can reduce the prices and they can understand somebody's uh, motivations to move. Um, and then our portal costs. And again, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Should you be on them all? Shouldn't you be shouldn't you be on them all? If you're not on them all, are you going to lose instructions because of it? Um, it's a really tough place. So I'm not sat here saying, oh, agents haven't reduced their cost. It's a really difficult decision to make. But I think some agents are going to be forced to make some tough goals over the coming months. Wise words again. Right, let's move on and look at sales pipeline. So this is the number of units that are um that are in a state agent's sales pipeline on a month by month basis from to from January 2017. The pinks are July, so obviously on the far right hand side at the moment, there are 427,756. Well, there was on the 1st of August. Um, again, I think that's just important to see that yes, we've had two good previous Julys. But while our pipelines are still on average 90,000 pound 90,000 units as a whole country more. So our pipelines are approximately 30% more than they were in 17, 18 and 19. Chris, and if, can I ask you a question on that, Mr. Yeah, being the man of all stats, and I don't expect you to have it readily available. Is there an argument? So speaking to lots of our members, their pipelines are absolutely bursting at the moment, but their exchange numbers for year to date may not be as high because transactions are taking longer and longer to go through. So certainly probably when you and I were doing the day to day, you were churning your pipeline four times a year. And, and I'd be amazed if many agents are churning it four times a year anymore, more likely three times. I think three is good. Yeah. I mean, the, av the average is 19 weeks at the moment. Is it really? Nine, 52 into 19 goes two and a bit. Yeah. So, so therefore, so it, yeah, you well, could. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Again, I haven't got the I haven't got the stats going back to sixteen, but it's been at around those late teens for about the last five or six years. I would say it was still seventeen or eight, seventeen, eighteen weeks back in seventeen and eighteen. I think that the good old days when I know you obviously don't use coloured hairs, and, and neither do I, do my to myself because I'm grey. <laughs> um, but but. When you and I were, were young lads in a state agency, the, you know, 12 weeks was considered a yeah. long time. So, I mean, that is a, that, I mean, uh, that is a, 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 a that is a, a, a fantastic argument and discussion is why does it take so long? Why does it take so long? Yeah. And what would be really interesting, Chris, and again, I have no idea of what the answer is, but at what points are we most likely to see a sale fall through? Because if it's weeks 15 and 16, because people are getting bored and fed up and something else is it, 
changed their decision. There's a really strong argument for agents to get together, whether it's one of these blockchains or Gazelle or any of these types of companies to get together uh, to improve the market. Well, um, it's a multitude of things. I, I recently interviewed um, Kate Faulkner, who's a member of the House Buying and Selling Group, which is that government-sponsored group of everyone coming together. They're starting to make waves and come together. I think a, a big thing that an estate agents can do is, is get the solicitors instructed on the day that you put the house on the market. I don't know why the hell you don't do that. Get it instructed and get start getting the searches going. And, you know, most solicitors will take the searches from someone else. You know, if the vendor decides to pay for the searches, you're getting the ball rolling, getting the forms filled in. Um, that's one thing that I think we can definitely do. And I think estate valuers are really, oh, what am I trying to say? I've got to be careful what I say. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to go for it anyway. I think valuers are so concerned on getting the listing. You know, valuers are atrocious at getting mortgage leads. And valuers, I'm making a sweeping statement here. I know some are very good, but generally valuers are not very good at getting mortgage leads and they're not very good at getting solicitors instructed because they don't want anything to get in the way of getting the listing. Yep, great. It's all about the listing. And by the time they've got the listing, they've moved on to the next one and they're not getting... Yeah, and don't even start me on valuers not actually doing any uh, sales progression. Um, not sales progression, um, vendor contact. That winds me up. You put the bloody house on the market. You overcooked it. Be a man or woman about it. Get the bloody thing down when you do have to do vendor management. Don't leave it to little Floss who's 23 years old. You're, you're the one that's got to do it. Anyway, back off my, back off my uh, soapbox. Um, what else am I talking about? Right. The other thing is this. Sales progress. Okay. Yes. Reservation agreements. Uh, I was talking to Alex from uh, Knight Edmonds in Maidstone. They use Gazeal. Their fall through rate is 7%. Yeah. Okay. The average, in the, the av I mean, again, let's just have a quick look at the fall through rates. We'll just pull, there you go. Just pull that back up. Fall through rate. Am I sharing my screen or not? No. Right. Hold on. There we go. There's your fall through rate. Presently running at 30. Yeah, and interestingly, this whilst this may not demonstrate it, we recently had one of our advisory council meetings where we've got 15 sort of agents from across the country who, who help us analyze the market and so on. And what was really interesting is two points you've put up or you've just made, and this wasn't premeditated. One was taking instructions from solicitors at point of instruction. But more so, agents are more and more reintroducing mark upfront marketing costs or cancellation fees. Now, to me, you know, we're fighting and fighting for the business, and therefore, bringing in a cancellation fee or an upfront marketing fee has a negative impact for the listers to be able to present that valuation. If these businesses, and they're all fantastic businesses, are prepared to throw that into the mix and say to their listers, we want 399 marketing fee up front, it's because there is a lack of commitment and full throughs are becoming more and more prevalent. I mean, if you're an estate agent, I mean, one of the I think one of the biggest things that you can do, you're gonna say, well, how can I get that? How can I get that? when no one else is getting a withdrawal fee or whatever you call it. Well, if all you're doing is a few photographs and a floor plan, you're not going to do that. i tell you what is an absolute magic weapon is presenter-led video tours. And if you can do some of those uh, as you're going, you know, then you can actually say, I need to get a videographer. In. They don't need to know it's Bob, your negotiator, coming around with a camera. But, I mean, these things here, you could. I, I've done some video training on, on how to use these. If you hold it like that... It's, it's stabilized, you know, and you just walk around like this. You can have one, some of these little microphones. Get these off Amazon. These are brilliant, Richard. You can plug yourself in. There you go. One of these little things here. And you plug it into your phone. You plug it into your phone there. This is Amazon. 20 quid, 25 quid. And you can walk around the house giving it the old uh, homes under the hammer malarkey. People absolutely love it. And you can say, I will do your video tour, but obviously I need to pay for the videographer. That they don't need to know it's Bill the Neg. Um, and people will, people will pay for that. They, 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 they really, really will. And if you want, if anyone's watching this and they want that free video training, send me a, a, a text message that says free video training and I will send it to you. Uh, my telephone number is 07 
572. I'll do that 07950 Send me a text message that says free video marketing, and I will send you all the stuff on how to do video tours. It works really, really well. Um, so I think it's really easy for us to sit here. I was never the greatest lister. I was quite a good neg, but I was never the greatest lister. So I do appreciate for those doing doing the job, it's quite hard. But I think a lot of the time it's a fear of asking or demonstrating why certain stuff's needed. So most agents these days are putting a little bit of spend behind social media marketing. Yeah. So we are spending lots of money on the properties to take them to market. And therefore, if we clearly outline what we're doing, why we're doing it, what we expect the results to be, I think people will be more inclined to say, actually, I would put up 300, 400, 500 quid, whatever it may be, because these guys are going to put some spend behind social media and they're going to send a videographer around and, and, and. You've also got the ability to understand somebody's commitment, because if I'm selling a house at you know, 300,000, a million pounds, and I'm not prepared to uh, outlay 400 quid, there's probably a challenge of my motivation. Indeed. Right, we're going to move on and look at the regional stats. We, As always, we don't spend too long on these, but you can have a look and just get a flavour. They are available to download on the link from the from the right move, uh, sorry, from the YouTube description. Um, remember, green is good, red is bad. Um, and again, all just, you know, you can download these to your heart's content and just get a flavor of where your marketplace is going compared to other locations. Uh, we've also got some stuff. Go on. Chris, historically, over the last couple of weeks, I know you and I have done a few shows, um, but it but they're sort of isolated numbers. Are you seeing much different in trends? So, so an interesting stat I've been told, and I've spent some time with one of a well-known portal I won't mention, uh, data team uh and the early indicators although you know they're not prepared to verify it yet are 35 percent of inquiries are made by people living 50 plus kilometers away from a property they are inquiring about then i again i don't um, have such data on that um and as such is that removing our local markets more so you know are we seeing people moving out of london into the home counties and home counties uh you know, southeast, southwest, wherever it may be, and therefore are some of the regions slightly further away from the bigger cities seeing a benefit due to the lifestyles we're all living where most people are able to work from home a number of times a week or whatever it, whatever it may be. Are you seeing uh, a difference in the, in the figures since 2020 and COVID than beforehand or anything you've noticed? I mean, we've only got the regional stats uh, in this going back to 2020, and I haven't actually looked. I haven't uh, again. If you look, if you just um, let me pull this back up again, um, I'm only comparing. You know, this is gross sales yeah. percentage of listings, which is again demand, which is what you're talking about. Is you know, the, the, if I was having a green moving to a red in a region I, that that would be showing but again this is like a super tanker i'd have to go away and have a look and see how these figures compared to 2020 it's a big job but it can be done yeah and i suppose my point which i put across poorly was actually if i'm moving out of london to the thames valley there's a price difference anyway from the value of my property in london at a million pounds to a similar property in the thames valley at seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds for argument's sake so therefore the market, if a market drops by by ten percent, actually I'm buying at nine hundred and seven twenty, rather than a million and eight hundred, and therefore I'm still inclined to make that move because there's additional benefits for me. And if that's the case, does that keep our market moving? Because if I'm moving from the Thames Valley to the Thames Valley, and there's a ten percent hit on my my house and a ten percent hit up, I might be less inclined to move. I mean, that sort of data is going to be coming from the portals. And I think the magic thing there is, if they are quoting that, is it's easy to say 30% of X. It's how does it compare to what it was before? And that's the magic thing with stats. So, yeah, yeah um, if you if you know that, that portal and they want to talk to me, put me in contact with me, we can probably have a look at that because I've got this weird brain when it comes to stats. Um I think we're about there. Again, all these are available to download. Um, 
there's fall throughs, which again I know is quite a hot topic at the moment. As you can see here, East of England seems to have increased. We've got here red's good, red is bad, green is good. Um, again, have, haven't noticed that the green centre bit, the lower end, which is the northerly parts, whilst the southern end, you have more fall throughs. Have you noticed the tonality there? You've got a lot more reds at the top than greens at the bottom. And that's because, you know, look at Yorkshire and Humber. They seem to be the golden region where fall throughs are much less. Northeast coming in at second. But the area with the highest fall through rate is outer London, where you've got an average of, of the 30s. It's quite weird, isn't it? The number of fall throughs. Yeah, it does. Like you say, maybe if you exclude inner London, like you've always said, if you remove inner London, you'll get some trends from this. It just feels like it branches out slightly, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, I was speaking to one of our members in Scotland uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we do a weekly, a monthly poll, and their numbers were fantastic, absolutely fantastic, bucking all trends of every other region we've got. I mean, if you actually notice, when I do these regional figures, I don't actually colour code or uh, for conditionally format Scotland because it's always way off the chart and a lot better. Now, again, I know the legal system is a bit better there, or, or they're more tied in. But I think it's, if you actually take the time to look at the Scotland figures, they are a lot, lot better. Um, I think we're about there. Shall we now move on and look at um, our chosen town this week? Indeed. Where, where are you taking me? So this week, uh, this week we are going to St. Helens. Okay. I don't know if you've ever been. Um, um, I think I've driven past it once, but I've never been inside. So uh, yeah. this will be a new one for me. Uh, and should be able to see the 20 EA Insights platform. Can you see that there? Yes. So just so we, again, please take the piss out of me on this one, because you know I'm going to say this. The 20 EA Insights platform is a platform which is available to all estate agents. Uh, I think you can have a couple of postcodes for free. And then after that, you have to pay them a small amount of money if you want more postcodes. I'm using the same platform that you can buy on a more national basis. Uh, I do not pay for this platform, but but what I do do is, is that I use it in this show and, and in return, I mention it to estate agents. So if you, what I'm going to show you today is what you can see on 20EA Insights with yours. So 20EA has a number of uh, things that it can offer estate agents, one of which is the Insights platform. And this is Right Move Plus on steroids with rockets and lasers. It, it just is, I just love it a bit. I'm a bit of a fanboy. And um, for those of you that don't know, my, my daytime job is not doing these shows. I mean, I must admit, they take about five hours of my life a week to prepare, along with a couple of hours from my amazing VA, Tatiana in South Africa. Hi, Tatiana. Uh, thanks for what you do. Um, but my daytime job is I help letting and estate agents grow their attract vendors and landlords by writing articles about their local property markets. And I, I come in, lots of stats come into me because I need the stats because they're hyper, lots of stats. I just decided to do this uh, at Christmas time where why don't we use some of the stats? Let's be honest, market share is not of interest to uh, homeowners and landlords, but it's fascinating to a lettings and estate agents. So that is why we use this platform. And today, as I said, we are focusing totally on St. Helens. So for the purposes of uh, for the purposes of this, the uh, St. Helens is WA9, WA10 and WA11. Also, just for the record, the, the Tabern property consultants were taken over by Stapleton Derby. So we must remember to say that when, whenever we mention them, uh, the feed name hasn't been swapped over by 20EA. I will be speaking to them to get that swapped over. So sh shall we dive in and go str straight in for... And you can quite clearly see here. So we'll firstly start off with number of properties on the market. And we'll get, well, let's look at July because we are full the full month. If you go back to July 2021, there were 627 properties for sale in St. Helens. And today it's 1,203. 1, so the number of properties for sale in St. Helens has doubled in the last two years. Pretty Pretty eye-watering, isn't it? That's, a, That's like, remarkable, isn't it? And it and it looks, you know, just looking at where you're showing me, it's consistent throughout the year today, isn't it? Just a huge increase. Yeah, definitely. On, on available stock. 
So, you know, basically the way to start that is is look at what's happened in, in the turquoise, which is 21, and see that she's reducing in 21, because all stock was reducing. And then slowly from January 22, she started to rise, which is the darker blue. And then she's continued on by going round again, and she's continued to rise in 2023. Again, August doesn't mean things have dropped. We have to wait to the end of the month and get the month end figure for that. Now, in terms of... Chris, St. Helens is Merseyside, isn't it? Yes, it is. So I can't think of anything which would force people to move or anything. The 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 number of stock available nationally hasn't doubled, but it's probably near about 60 or 70%. <laughs> so there's a few more properties that have come onto the market now. So, na- so St. Helens is bucking the national trend. Let's have a quick look. So this is the number of properties that are available for sale. And as you can see here, Belvoir for the whole since since the January the first, twenty twenty one, had a stock of starting around ten percent. She went up to sixteen, and now she's back down to eleven. Ashtons, oh well done, Ashtons. Uh, you look like you're growing your market share of stock, but again, it's whether you sell them or not, which we'll come on to in a second. We've got David Davis. And you guys seem to be dropping. Um, Little estate agents, again, up and down, but you're about there. Tabern, which is an early Stapleton Derby. You seem to be guys growing. Reed's Reigns, again, we went up and dropped down. Purple Bricks, well, they're, they're booking the national track. They're booking the, from the national trend. They're growing. Well done, Purple Bricks. Burns and Reed, you guys seem to be uh, dropping off slightly. Entwistle Green, dropping and strike. Oh, it's a surprise. Um, should we move on and look at um, a little bit more detail? So the average, pro- so 7,300, and again, Richard, just jump in at any time because I will just keep talking unless you, you set up. Oh, okay, so 7,392 new instructions have come on the market between the 1st of January 21 and the 14th of August, an average price of 186. Let's have a look at, uh, so and this is new instructions. Here we go. So Belvoir seems to be on. Now, I do know for a fact that Belvoir w- bought a uh, competitor out a few years ago and they had to rebrand because they're part of a franchise. And I think that's just hit them slightly. Uh, but the guy that runs it, Dave Roberts, uh, he's not a client of mine, but um, I do, I've do i known him th- for quite a few years. Um, he's the sort of guy that will sort that out. Don't worry about that. Um, so again, um, average price 186. So Belvoir... Their average price is 168. So they're obviously showing that they're going for the lower to middle market. Yeah. Let's go and have a look at Ashton's 192. Well done, Ashton's. They are a large chain uh, of about 10 ish branches in that part of the world, Warrington around there. Um, nice people, spoken to them a few times. Um, David Davis, 230. So obviously, David Davis, they look like the posh agent. We'll have just a double check in a second. Uh, Littles. 175 Taberns, which are Stapleton Derby 227 Reeds Reigns. Okay, any thoughts on that before I go and look at who's the upper quartile agent? Uh, no, I'm you've obviously got Belvoir, which are a franchise, haven't you? What's quite interesting is in that particular market, the what I would call the corporate, so your Reeds Range, your Purple Bricks, your Strikes, your Belvoirs, um, all seem to be fairly dominant, don't they? Yeah, and there's not much there. We'll just have a quick look at the upper quartile, which is 400,000 plus. And it looks like David Davies is the main player there with Ashton's coming in at 12% of market share of new instructions with Tabern, which we know is Stapleton Derby and Bell and Littles and Belvoirs. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's quite interesting. Um, right then. So there we go. Let's look at the quick sales. The important one. Interestingly, look at the number of sales. So again, you know, let's look here. May in 21, 289 sales, 223 sales in May 22, but in um, May 23, 250. But then we went back to normal. We are seeing, if you can see here, in the vast majority of months, in the vast majority of locations, the number of sales is dipping. Um, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. When we went to new instructions, the new instructions were increasing, yet the sales are decreasing. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. It's an interesting story, isn't it? It is an interesting story. Let's um, see. 
what, what would be really interesting is how many of how many agents are using data like this to present the story in the market on evaluation. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you on that one. This is the number of uh, prop. These are fall throughs. Um, and let's just have a quick look at which agents are having to price reduce their stock. That's interesting. Ashton's are the, the biggest price reducers. We'll come on to that in a second on how, if, if, a, if an agent put on a house, what's the chances of actually selling it? We'll come on to that in a second. That shows, I mean, I mean, look at the price changes here. I mean, these are massive numbers, aren't they? It just yeah. shows that the agents are doing their work. Ashton's, it looks like it you're working your stock there, guys. Nice one. But but should but then there's another question: Should you be putting them on at slightly over overcooked well, prices? I was just tri quickly trying to look to see if there was any kind of trend which was showing, you know, a handful of agents potentially overvaluing, or are there any agents in there not reducing stock, but still retain a market share of sold subject to contract? So again, every agent will be different, won't won't, won't know, and we won't get a, a definitive answer. But um, there you go. Um, again, that falls quite in line. That's it. That, look, the magic is to look at the percentage yep. versus the number of listings. So there we go. We'll just have a quick look. Ashton's are 18 and Belvoir 12. Ashton's 14, 14 and 11. So it looks like Ashton's are working their stock more. Yep. But the question is, is that because they overcooked them or not? I and mean, we're not criticizing, we're just having a chat. Um, these are interesting. And and then how does that compare with sold subject to contract? So if Ashton's are listing 14, reducing 18, and selling 16, they're probably right in the middle, aren't they? Listing 14, reducing 18, selling 16. Well, th th let's just have a quick look there. So new instructions, 14 and 11, but sold subject to contract, 16 and 13. Yeah. But this that we actually brings it, we can bring all this together um, by um, this, okay? Can you see this? Yes. So I'm just going to zero in on this. Right then. The residential sales market in terms of listings from the summer of last year to this summer compared to summer of 21 to summer of 22 has risen by 4.17%. So you can quite clearly see that Taverns, which are Stapleton Derby, have increased their market share by 28%. Ashton's at 18, Little's at 18, Burns and Reed 18, and Belvoir at 19. So again, we we I, I picked up the phone and had a word with Belvoir and said, why the drop? And they just said, because we've just lost a little bit of the brand equity, but they're working on it with their marketing on that one. And if anyone's going to do it, Dave will. Uh, interestingly, 11.75% of properties in um, St. Helens sell with an online estate agent, which is higher than the national average of 5.5. That, um, that surprises me slightly, actually, because a discount, you would imagine, uh, and I've not been to St. Helens for many years, but the average property price in St. Helens will be considerably higher than it would be in St. Albans, for argument's sake. Yes. And therefore, the fixed fee of a purple bricks or a strike wouldn't be as low a percentage as it would do in St Albans, yet the take-up is far higher. Pardon me. Uh, the further north you go, there is a slightly higher propensity to use the online agents. So. This graph is good. It just gives you a visual representation of the, the average price on the, on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis, the number of new instructions. And you can see how Ashton's and Belvoir swap over. Can you see that? Yeah. It looks like David Davis is, is moving forward, um, has, has gone backwards. As you can see here, it says 8%. And you've got Ashton's, which have improved by 18.5. Okay. But it's like we've just said. Right, let's move on to this one because this is this is the this is this is where the magic happens. Okay. Let's ignore new instructions, new instruction market sales, sort of the contract. This is the magic, okay? Exchanged and withdrawn. Let's ignore fallen throughs. So let's ignore price changes. Um, what I would like to do, Richard, is once I've just done my bit for the next two minutes, 
I want you to look at have have start looking at the price reduction figures and see if that has any relationship. So just have a look at that whilst I do the, this bit here. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you ask an estate agent, there's only two ways a property can leave your books. One is exchange or the other one is withdrawn. OK, so therefore, in the last 12 months, Ashton's have exchanged on 257 properties and had 131 withdrawn. So if you add up the two exchange and withdrawal percentages, it adds up to 100 percent. The average. So this is the magic here is this is 60 for in the last year. For every 100 houses that came onto the market, 64.8% actually exchanged, whilst 35 withdrew. Okay, now that's not to say that they didn't go on with another agent, but the simple fact is leaving the agency. Now, this is where the magic happens is this. Ashton's have grown market share and are presently sitting at with 66.24% of properties withdrew. 66.24% uh, of properties have have exchanged. So in essence, if you're Ashton's, you can say, if you put the house on the market with me, you will exchange on 66.24% of properties. A, a great chance. You've got a 66.24% chance of moving with me. Look at Belvoir, 75.5. David Davies, 70.9. Littles at 70.3. Taverns, which we know is Stapleton, Derby, um, is at 65, 67, sorry. Reed's Reigns at 63, Purple Brick 72, Burns and Reed at 70, Strike at 55, Entwistle 66, and Stapleton Derby at 71. Now, this is important. Is this, that if I was Belvoir and I was going up against Ashton's, I would say you have a about a 12 to 15% greater chance because whatever the percentage difference is, it isn't a case of taking one from the other because that's not how maths works. But I haven't got my calculator. That's about a 12 or 13% chance. You've got a greater chance of selling with Belvoir and getting the moves compared to Ashton's or, or David Lee's, uh, David Davies. And, and look at Strike at 55. And that is normally, Strike are normally one of the best, actually. So I don't know what you guys Strike are doing in St. Helens on that one. Probably need to pull your socks up a bit on that one, guys. Nothing personal. Um, so that just shows that the, the, in terms of the top 10 estate agent, the best estate agent by a country mile on terms of who will actually get your house sold is Balfour. Yeah, and I've just looked at those price changes, Chris. And what's really, really interesting, if you look at David Davis, so he's got, they've got a 71% of their instructions exchange. Yes. Which is a fairly healthy number, but they only reduce 19%. So they are listing correctly, aren't they? They Whether are. that's the right strategy or not is is uh, depend depends on each agent. But actually, they are only reducing twenty percent of their stock, but they're still exchanging on seventy one percent. Whereas a somebody like an Ashton, sorry, the numbers have just disappeared, are only exchanging on sixty six percent, but they're reducing forty eight percent. Well, we've actually got some stats to back that up. And I've had a quick peek when you were saying that. And this particular screen here shows you, okay, so when a property comes on the market, the 20EA platform will have an automated valuation model figure or a ValPal figure um, for that property. And then they will judge that against what the agent puts the houses on the market. So on average, Ashton's will put their house on the market 1.85% more than what they, than what the independent 20 ea platform thinks it's worth okay alvoir 2.37 but here's the magic thing david davis one percent but when it actually comes to what you actually sell the house for so this is the price achieved from the original asking price to what it sells for this is absolutely that was very well spotted even without looking at this graph richard because you don't get to see these before look they only take 0.32 0.32 off the so they're getting 0.3% more, aren't they? More, yeah, sorry, yeah, my apologies, well spotted there. So that is absolutely bang on, because this is there, look, price change is 19.7. They, they, in terms of the, the estate agent who prices right in the eyes of 28, it's David Davis by a country mile. Absolutely country mile. So this graph here, this bit here shows you how much have you overvalued it or over and above what the house they think it's worth. And then what you then have to take off the original asking price 
And it quite clearly shows that David Davis gets on average 0.3% more for the property than the original asking price. Chris, if you scroll, or you don't need to scroll down this, uh, Patterson. So obviously Patterson have an agency, but they also have the auction department. So yes. it could well be that that's due to the auction price and the guide price being low. So that one might be an anomaly. But Yopa, again, at 5.56, I wonder what their strategy is. In, indeed, it could be a guide price. Or again, we're dealing with quite low numbers here. So it doesn't take one yeah. or two to screw the, not screw the figures up. I mean, if we just, I think the magic thing is if we're looking at the top 10 estate agents, now, num- there's numbers, damn number, you know, lies, st- lies, damn lies, and statistics. So, the wonderful thing about this 20 EA platform is this is that they say, right, if every agent put on the same 200,000 pound house, what would you actually achieve for it? And you can quite clearly see here that Ashton's would get 194663, whilst Belvoir would get 198185, and David Davis, 202. Yeah, and and again, you you position your story using this, these stats depending on what story you want to give, can you? Because you could argue, and I'm not suggesting they do at all. Uh, absolutely not suggesting they do, but the argument could be that Yopa are undervaluing and getting over asking price, and therefore are they uh, costing people money? On the flip side, you could say Yopa outperform everybody else if you remove Patterson because they're achieving 215 where against a. Uh, average listing price of 200 so it is all about the stories and collecting the way you fra- it is the way you frame it i mean coming back to the big estate agents there if i was you know you've got the three or four big agents there if i was Belvoir or david davis and i was up against ashton i'd say if you go with them you're going to lose three thousand pounds or five thousand pounds more and this is it this is the independent evidence Whilst yeah. I was David Davis, I would say I'm going to get you more than anyone else. But again, it's not all about the price you achieve. It's whether you're going to sell it or not. And again, let's come back. Belvoir, Mrs. Miggins, you've got, a, you know, you've got a one in two in three chance of selling with someone else or a three and four chance with me. Yeah. You know, it's it's all about the language and the way you frame it and the story that you tell. OK, and that's the wonderful thing is that you can take this stats out with you onto this, you know, in, in, in I, you know, on the valuation, and when you're arguing the toss over half a percent, you know, I'm one and a half, and they're and they're one, and you're trying to say, well, I'll, you know, yes, it might cost you an extra seven hundred pounds, but I'm going to get you an extra four thousand pounds, and here's the proof, because this is all independent. Anyway, um, any anything on this before we go and look at how quickly agents take to sell their houses? No, I think I, I think. All of the ones I've looked at, that sort of exchange percentage rate seems to be around that sort of 65 to 70%. You'd have looked at far more than I would, so it may vary from place to place. Um, Further north think, you go, the number that number gets bigger. That number increases. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think, but I just think agents need to be aware of all of this stuff. What are you measuring? What are you measuring yourself against? Okay, now in terms of this, this is uh, this shows you the top ten estate agents in uh, St Helens and how quickly they take to find a buyer and get it sold to the contract, which is this column here, new instruction to sort of the contract, and then how long they take to get a property through from sale agreed to completion. So you can quite clearly see here that the best estate agent in terms of sales progression is um, oh, it's gone, hasn't it? Sorry about this. Let me just keep talking. Well, we can look at it here. There you go. So it, we can quite clearly see here that little estate agents, 44 days to get a sale agreed and 124 days from sale agreed to completion. Well, so we look at Purple Bricks, 160 days to find a buyer and two and 159 days to get it through from sale agreed. What's your thoughts on this? I, I think that, and I don't know David Davies, estate agents, but if you go back to that graph, Chris, what I believe was demonstrated that they were in the higher end of the market. Yes, it was. On new instructions and on sales, yet their time from new instruction to sold subject to contract is actually really competitive with the rest of the market. So we've discussed earlier today that the larger yeah. properties take longer to sell, yet not only are they demonstrating they get their pricing right, but obviously their strategy of if we price correctly, we'll sell quickly. And we'll get them exchanged. Because that's quite, I didn't spot that. So sublime, sublime uh, look there. Because normally, the like you say, 
the posher end properties don't sell as well, and normally the valuate the valuation is a bit more off. So it just shows and you take longer to go through because often you have a longer chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, bang on. And, and they're bucking the trend. So hats right. off to them, whoever they may be. Good stuff. Right then. Um, final slide, and we're just having a quick look at the lettings market. Okay. Um, and again, um. 15% of landlords use an online agent, which again is quite high, hence why open rents up here. So this yeah. is the last 12 months in the rental market. Um, and you can quite clearly see here that, um, you know, you've got Ashton, you've got, sorry, you've got open rent, which are head and shoulders above everyone else with market share in the teens. But you've got three huge players here, which is Littles, Reeds and Belvoir. Looks like um, is Ashton's on the way up. So again, oh, uh, Chris, eighty percent by little. Now you would understand an eighty percent growth if they were featuring a number eleven with fifteen instructions. But actually, to be referred to be number two with an eighty percent growth, it is you know they might have acquired a portfolio. There could be a whole host of reasons, but that's really impressive numbers. Yeah, and what we've found with these stats is this because the many many estate agents have not been listing their properties on the portals where where we can where they scrape the data and, and analyze it. You have to take this with a slight pinch yeah. of salt. I think it's important just to give you an idea of 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 what's happening in the market. Uh, right, I think we'll leave it at that with St Helens. So uh, it's been uh, if you're in St Helens and you want any more information about where these stats come from, can do speak with the twenty EA guys. Um, final thoughts, Richard on what you've seen today? Uh, final thoughts. I think it's early days to make any predictions, but I do think that what we're seeing is signs of a tougher market. That's not to say agents will earn less money or less opportunity, but they will need to have some strict processes and, and understand what's going on in our local markets. What I think is really key is when we get into a tougher market, running a business, as most estate agents are sort of small family-owned businesses, it's quite a lonely place. And one of the good things since lockdown is I think we're, as an industry, a lot more open to collaboration, sharing ideas, and being open around our sort of challenges and solutions. So I think agents should be, whether that's on LinkedIn, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's networks, whatever it may be, should be really open to reaching out to people, talking about their problems because, you know, problem shared and problem halved and and your problems today, something I may have gone through six months ago or may go through in the next six months. So all of these conversations are really, really good. Um, I think that's, I mean, that's the beauty. And again, and that we, this, we didn't, we weren't planning to talk about this, but um, the, you know, you're the boss of the reloc relocation agent network. And that's the wonderful thing about these sort of organizations is that, you, you know, you can only have one agent per town and you can come together with people who are going through the same problems that you are going, the opportunities and work things out. And, you know, don't get me wrong. There are other affiliate programs available, which you should also check out. But, um, and again, you know, but do check, you know, there's the FIA, there's the Guild, but, you know, Rani's run by some amazing people led by Richard. So do check them out. So, you know, it's a lonely old game out there, be it running your own business. So you might as well join an organization where you've been in a club of estate agents, a tribe of agents that you can, that you can, as I said, go through the same problems that you're going through, because it's going to be tough in the next 12 or 18 months. I don't care what you say. Um, final words before we go. <laughs> Chris, that wasn't actually uh, that wasn't actually a picture. There's a lot of stuff. There's awesome. a lot of people doing some really good stuff on LinkedIn and YouTube. So whilst yes, joining a network, whether it's us, whether it's Guild, whoever it may be, is great. But there's also just reach out to people, have conversations because people are in the same position as you. as you all will be. Thank you for your time today, Richard. You've been right, exceptional you. as always. More importantly, thank you for watching this. I will see you next week with the next guest. And we'll be looking at another town at the end. Uh, we hope you get lots from it. If you've got any suggested towns you want us to look at, put them in the comments or send me a private message. Thanks, Richard, and thank you for watching.